These people all have something in common. They are here to discuss the future of a historic building in Great Yarmouth. A building that has played a vital role in Great Yarmouth's herring industry and a building that has strong heritage links to the town. Young professionals, locals, artists, creatives, business owners and more have come together in an open space to discuss what interests them about the heritage and future of the Ice House. Situated on Great Yarmouth's main quay, the Ice House is a thatched roof, stone-built, oblong building that has remained dormant for many years since the decline of the fishing industry in the town. But now with a vision and with some help from the locals, it is hoped the Ice House will spring into life again. The Ice House that was built round about 1859 for the East Suffolk Railway Company and basically that was a storehouse for ice. They'd bring it down here on a wherry, tie up on the riverside and unload the ice by hand on barrows and the ice was actually stacked in this building. The Elmer's Ice House, I, I really remember sort of mainly as a boy when I used to walk past it. I, I sort of first remember the uh, quite a few fishing boats. I would imagine there was oh, well over three or four hundred in the harbour. And yeah, they, they used to say you could walk from one side of the river to the other across the fishing boats. Also, when they used to come down would be uh, all the Scotch girls who would come and uh, cut all the fish and sort them out and, and that sort of thing. I can always remember just how quick they were when they gutted those fish. The community of those women were wonderful. Yeah, it's been fascinating to, uh, to, to explore the history. And um, the Ice House has, to, to me, a, a really nice sense to it. It's, a, it's an exciting and interesting building to be in, even in its rough state. It has a nice ambience to it. It's a combination of materials, wood, thatch, brick. You know, it's, it's part and parcel of the story of, of Yarmouth's relationship to the river and, 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 to, and to the sea. Yarmouth was built on the fishing industry. That's one of the richest towns in Britain, and that's mainly through the fishing. It originally started off as a sandbank, and they'd have a fish fair on the sandbank. Gradually, the town grew up around this fish fair. And if you think about it, I mean, Yarmouth was originally an island um, where two, two, two rivers met the sea. Um, and when they joined on, then Yarmouth at the north end joined on to the, to the land mass. And the ice house would have been in the position, kind of in a way, watching over right there. Um, the creation of Yarmouth in its, in its first, first instance, that, that's the kind of the spot. This area of the quayside, which the ice house stand on, was actually known as Norway Quay because you had the ice coming in from Norway and what they'd do in Norway would be cut it into blocks about two foot square, bring it over by bark, moor it up outside. The ice would then be brought into the shed and stacked on top of planks on the dirt floor and the ice would have actually been surrounded with straw. Once the floor was covered, they'd then put straw over the top, another range of planks because when you step on ice, that start to melt. The weight of somebody stepping on ice will melt the ice. Um, so what they done, they put straw on as an insulator, and then put, put planks on top, and they'd build it up in sections to the height of the roof near enough, where the doorways were, which are the windows above us. That window in which the ice house did operate on that basis was relatively small because after automation develops ways of uh, of chilling foods uh, without the need for gathering ice in that way it was used to store other things including fertilizer um, it's, ha it's had various uses over the years it used to be one of a pair on the key side and um, when you hear about the life that took place there and it's very much 
changing history. It was never just one thing that it was there for. It makes you feel connected and a part of making its history for the future with what we're doing now. So the history of the Ice House and remembering that history really is key to the future of the building as an arts and entertainment venue. From the moment that you pull open these big wooden barn doors and you enter this big sort of hall, there's a, there's a sense of drama and excitement, there's an energy in the air. A bit like the drill house, there's like a, an energy and excitement of potential and creativity. Most people pass by the Ice House every day and probably don't even know what it was or what it could be. So we plan to develop the Ice House into a multi-purpose cultural venue with a specialist focus on vocational training in circus and outdoor arts. It will be active year round for a range of events, participatory activity, training, workshops. And the scheme is underway. It's going to be realised in some shape or form in the next couple of years. That building will be an active cultural centre. We spend time with local communities in the very local areas to the Ice House. We did lots of really fun um, arts activities to get people engaged and thinking about the Ice House, learning about its history and what it could be. So there's been various arts and crafts, painting, collage, story creation, little concertina booklets made. The youngest children loved smashing the ice blocks and finding little artifacts and fishes and bits of stories in there. It's great to see especially children engaging in the history of the Ice House. The younger you can learn people the history of the town, that's a lot. That's, that's very good. The Ice House was in a fishing industry. We wrote a story about it and I think they used to be too, but one of them got knocked down. They used to store ice there because Yarmouth used to be a really big fishing town. It's quite old and it's like, it looks like it's about to fall apart, but when you're inside it's really big, it's really pretty, and it's really cool. Yeah, it's not just about the history, it's about the future of the Ice House as well. And one hugely valuable way in which we have gained loads of really interesting ideas and information about what people want from the Ice House is through the open space consultation method that we have used at three different consultations here at the Drill House. Public consultations have been at the centre, not just in the development of the plans for the Ice House, but of our work um, for years and years and years. Um, we, we, we exist as a charity to benefit the local community here. So of course we want to know what they think about what we've been doing and what they think about what we, we what we will do. And at these consultations, we utilised a method called Open Space, which was facilitated by a team from the University of East Anglia, Chloe, Ben and Skye. So we've hosted three um, Open Space sessions on the Ice House with three different groups of people. So we did one with students, one with the general community and one with professionals. So we run open space events with these groups to find out what they would like from a space like the Ice House in Great Yarm. The Ice House consultations, I'm a little bit wary of the word consultation in the context of open space because it's kind of, it does do that, it has that function, but it's also about engaging people and creating a space where people can invest in a discussion which has a purpose. So thinking about uh, a building which will be an arts and cultural centre, but it's having a serious and deep conversation about how. So everyone starts off sitting in a circle and the facilitator explains the four rules of open space, which is whoever comes are the right people. Whenever it starts is the right time. Whatever happens is the only thing that could have and when it's over, it's over. And the point with those principles is to set the space as something which is, which there's no regrets around. It suspends time. It creates a different sense of time for the space that you're in. And that time is then focused on this, on this event. Then there's the one law, and that's really important. And that's the bit which says, if you're not learning or contributing, you can go somewhere. You should go somewhere. You must go somewhere where you can learn or contribute. And this will suspend social norms. So you normally you'd be very rude just to walk away from someone in the middle of a conversation, but in open space, it's a requirement if you're not contributing and learning. And it makes it okay on both sides of that to happen. 
the open space, the method, it like makes people uncomfortable and it's designed to do that to make people have thoughts they wouldn't usually have and decide to go for it. And um, during the student session, we found that was more pronounced than normal. But then when people did finally go up and share their ideas with the group, it was much more impactful. It's really just including the whole of the community. As a young person in a music industry or just the world as itself, you're not really taken as seriously. Um, and so having this opportunity where everyone everyone's voices is heard is really important. I think it's great to be reusing an, a, a, an old building, you know, repurposing it. Um, made being able to have a space for everyone would just be amazing. Whether you're a dancer like myself or a musician like myself, it's just nice to be able to have a space, another venue to add to our short list of where we can play and make a name for ourselves. I thought it was really nice because not many times you get to come into a big crowd and talk to loads of people and actually put your ideas down and be listened to. People were actively taking notes down of what we're saying and you can tell that they cared. So something that's been great about um, being a part of these discussions and hearing everyone's ideas is um, seeing how important like having this hub for the community is for people in Great Yarmouth and around Norfolk. And the open space public sessions weren't just for people local to Great Yarmouth. They drew in people from all around the region and brought together a real mixture of people from all walks of life. People who'd lived in Yarmouth for many years, people who are new to the area, different ages, people from all parts of the world. And it was so lovely to see such a diverse mix of people coming together and connecting in a real personal way and sharing their ideas and helping each other to develop their ideas. It was lovely to meet other people who all had a vested interest in what the building does um, and what it will do and the, the role it's going to play as part of the community. Um, it was really interesting to know that you're not alone in wanting good things for the town as well. So I've been very much on the outside facilitating, making sure events run smoothly, looking very carefully at how people are engaging. And at the creative session, um, it was kind of running smoothly enough for me just to participate. What surprised me was just how much I enjoyed being on the other side. I really loved it. I mean, I really like, you know, I, I sort of know what it should be like. Um, and then I was in it and having these wonderful conversations with really creative and brilliant people. I really enjoyed that. I really got something from it and hopefully that's what other people are getting from it too. Throughout the three sessions we've been putting together everything that was discussed on the day into a single book which will help out there to collate every idea that people have had and see what people need and to be able to put them into action when the ice house is up and running. So our plans are really to keep the, the, the main current building as intact and open and voluminous as it is uh, currently. We want it to be a, a big and flexible space that we can use for training and all kinds of events. So we're not planning to subdivide the, the main space. We will add a, li a little mezzanine, which will also provide access out to a balcony at the front on the east side that will look out over the river. Uh, and interestingly, there used to be a balcony for loading the ice in, in some time back, so that's coming back. And we're actually, we are going to build again another s s fa fairly slim and discreet building to the north side of the existing ice house. That will allow us to keep the main building free and voluminous. Many old buildings within the town have been lost over the years, so it is really quite important to actually repurpose buildings where possible. Oh, it's so important to keep the Ice House's heritage intact. And we want, and we certainly hope, that it will inspire people's creativity for many years to come. I think it's really important that the repurposing of historic buildings celebrates its past. Um, shows respect to um, the physical building itself and as much as possible if that purpose can kind of resonate out there as has existed in 25 years we've grown a lot in that time so we've got a lot of very exciting things we want to do at the ice house and we think people will really 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 enjoy engaging with them there
I was actually really unprepared for just how invested in the ice house I was going to be. And now that I have been a part of these sessions, I'm really excited to see what comes out of the ice house. And I think I'm going to be making a lot more effort to come to Great Yarmouth and get involved with everything that's going on here. I think I said it in one of the introductions to one of the events. It's sort of, it was like the server room for the fishing industry. And, and I think that analogy works for me in terms of like, you know, to have a fishing industry, you need to have these ice houses because they're the things that let the fish move around. Like it's, it's what enabled the, you know, the product that made Yarmouth fabulously wealthy a um, hundred years ago. Without the ice house, you don't, you can't sell the fish far away. So it was like this, this sort of hub, the hub of a wheel with lots of spokes going out and sort of sending out all these directions but it was rooted here it was like you know there's a connection here there ought to be uh friendship and happiness there and uh and yeah the ice house that would be a lovely place for people to go to the ice house has stood on this site for over 150 years now and that will be here for another at least 200 years overlooking the river there's nowhere like it in yarmouth the ice house has the potential to bring the great yarmouth community together much like its function in the past, the Ice House's future heritage will reintroduce it as an important building in the fabric of the town. Once an important part of the fishing industry, now its potential as a cultural hub for arts and heritage.